Next, we're going to talk about our first method for approximate inference. Uh, and this is called loopy belief propagation. So what we do in loopy belief propagation is, well, we defined belief propagation. We said it only works on Markov random fields in the form of a tree. Uh, now, of course, that's a big limitation because lots of Markov random fields aren't in the form of a tree. And in fact, any Bayesian network where there's any variable that has more than one parent, well, as we said, that's going to induce a moralization edge, and we're going to get a, a cycle of size three. So uh, belief propagation in itself is not uh, useful for all that many networks. Um, but one thing we can do is we can just take that exact same algorithm and run it on a Markov random field that does have loops. OK, so let's see what happens when we do that. So uh, we're, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to compute messages between every pair of variables. So this is going to look like a message from variable 1 to 2. And that's going to be a distribution over variable 2. Uh, so that's this edge here that we just did the message for. Uh, and we're going to do that for every pair of variables. Now, you might notice the first problem, which is that in normal belief propagation, we had to start from a leaf. But uh, in a graph with cycles, there might not even be a leaf. This, is a, uh, this graph is a good example. So what do we do? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to initialize the messages to something. OK, so for example, the, normal, the uniform distribution would, might be a reasonable uh, starting point. So we've initialized all our messages. Now we're going to do that same thing we did for belief propagation, and we're going to use it to compute our messages. And we're going to do that uh, in some arbitrary order over the nodes. So for example, if we start with node 1, we're going to compute the messages from node 1 to the other nodes. So we're going to compute this message and this message using exactly that same formula we defined before. Note that we're not when we're sending a message to three, we're, we're not going to use the message that we have uh, coming from three. That was the same as we did in normal belief propagation, likewise for variable two. OK, so we do that for node one. Then we go on to variable two. We're going to use that new message we had from node 1 to recompute all its messages. So we're going to get messages that go this way and this way. And we're going to continue. Uh, we compute the messages from node 3. Oh, by the way, we also we've got the node, the message from 2 to 1. We still have to compute that when we're doing our update for node 2. We do the same thing for 3. Here's our messages. And the same thing for 4. For that one for three. Uh, now, if we want the distribution over a given node, well, we can calculate that. We have all the messages coming in that we need to get a distribution over node one. But note that the messages from one are now out of date. Because, for example, when we computed the message from one to three, we used the message from 2 to 1, and now there's a new message. So this message is out of date. So we're going to iterate. We, we do the same thing over again, update all the, all the messages. We might not get the same values, because like I said, the messages we just we used to calculate the previous messages, those change, so we might get new messages in our iteration number 2. We iterate until we converge. So that's an algorithm. We can run it, but what do we get? Well, you probably know, you probably figured out already that we're not necessarily going to get the right answer because otherwise I would have just showed you this algorithm uh, instead of showing the special case when the MRF is a tree. So we said that when the MRF is a tree, belief propagation gives us the correct solution for our probabilistic inference. For loopy belief propagation, two things are the case. 
One, it might not converge. That is, you might keep doing your updates and keep on changing the messages forever. Uh, so that's no good. So you might not converge. And if you do converge, you might not converge to the correct uh, prob probabilities. You might not get the right answer for your, um, for your inference problem. So I told, if I tell you that, well, this is terrible. Why would you ever do this? Uh, and uh, certainly it's not as good as doing exact inference. So if you have the option to do exact inference, you should always do that. But as we've said, exact inference is often very expensive. Um, uh, so let's say we can't do exact inference. Turns out loof belief propagation, despite those two problems, uh, turns out to be a very effective algorithm in practice. Often it does converge and often it uh, converges quickly and to a very accurate solution. Um, you can do some theory about why this would be, uh, but, but, it, but empirically that turns out to be the case. Uh, and uh, as an extra bonus, it's quite easy to implement. Not really any harder to implement than belief propagation itself. There are some tricks for making it converge faster into a better solution. We're certainly not going to go into all uh, those tricks, but let me show you one uh, such trick. And that is damping the messages in loopy belief propagation. So that is, what we're going to do is we want to compute the message from node T to node S. Again, that's going to be a, a distribution over XS because we're going 2s. Uh, and we're going to do this for iteration k. Now, normally what we would do is ignore the second term. Uh, we would just compute our message from t to s. Uh, and that's going to be a function of the other messages going to t and the potentials in t um, using the algorithm we, that we just talked about. But we can often do a little bit better by doing the following. Uh, we take our message that we just computed and we do a weighted sum with the message we got at the last iteration. Uh, and that's weighted by some parameter lambda, uh, where lambda influences how quickly we change our messages. So if we take if we make lambda very small, that means that this term is, uh, has a very small influence, and so we're, we're basically just copying our message from the past iteration. If we make lambda very big, this term goes to nothing, so we're basically not doing any damping at all. Uh, so basically what this damping does is it says we're going to change our messages slowly. Uh, so that's going to greatly increase the chance that we converge, because often when we don't converge, it's because there's some kind of bouncing uh, behavior where when we do one iteration, it causes the, the messages to change in one way, and then the next iteration causes them to change right back. Uh, damping uh, using this method will slow the changes down and hopefully cause it to converge. Okay, so that was just uh, one trick. Uh, like I said, uh, using tricks like this, and even without using tricks like this, loopy pro belief propagation turns out to work often very well uh, in practice, and it's used in all kinds of applications.